Africa now. Um, Professor, different countries taking different measures, some drastic, some not so much. What do you think is the best approach? So the evidence we have both from, uh, from past pandemics and also from Asia suggests that early and more aggressive measures to control the epidemic, including social distancing, works better. Uh, and so I think for a lot of countries, um, you know, there has to be a decision of whether they want to go the way of Italy, which is really in crisis with an overwhelmed health system right now, or the way of South Korea or Taiwan, which implemented really aggressive measures for testing and social distancing and were able to uh, bring spread under control. We can see that it's, it's spread to um, 126 um, uh, countries now. Um, but in, in, the, in terms of what we're doing here in the UK, I mean, how would you measure things? Well, in general, I think I've, uh, I I've, have been supportive of the Chief Medical Officer and Public Health England and their efforts to prepare in recent weeks. Um, but I have to say, um, over the last several days, um, I have grown increasingly concerned that we're moving too slowly to implement measures that are going to actually slow the spread. We know there's already community transmission of coronavirus here uh, in the UK, and, and it's really past time to begin uh, more aggressive social distancing measures that are going to keep people away from large gatherings. Um, and otherwise gathering unnecessarily. Um, and, you know, what we've seen in Italy, for example, is they went from three cases to 3,000 cases over two weeks, and, and things really continue exponentially. Um, so we hope to hear an announcement today, but I think it's past time that we take more aggressive measures and begin to change the way that we live. Indeed, because um, in terms of social distancing, I mean, here in the UK, uh, sporting events are still continuing. Schools and universities have not been uh, shut down. I mean, how much of a risk would you say that is then putting everyone? It's hard to say, but I think we're, we're, we're playing with fire, knowing how quickly that this, this spreads. Um, school closures, I think the evidence is a little bit um, uh, less certain because children don't seem to be a big driver of this particular um, pandemic, uh, but we don't know, and certainly that has been done successfully elsewhere. But at this stage, I think cancellations of mass gathering, encouraging working from home where possible, and taking other measures um, to, uh, to, to, to start that social distancing process are really important, and frankly, it helps us all to transition the way that we live and work in a way that'll make it much easier than having to suddenly and without notice put everything on lockdown. I suppose different countries are taking different approaches because uh, the degree in which they feel there are the infections uh, differs. Uh, so some are still in containment phase uh, while others have gone into mitigation. Yeah, I think that's really a false distinction. Um, all the things that um, are important in containment phase, that's um, early case detection, tracing of contacts, and isolation uh, and care of cases are all still really important in the mitigation phase. What we really have to look at is that this is an epidemic that has a doubling time of five days, meaning that without any measures, it doubles in the number of cases about every five days. We need to be looking at where we would be a week from now and take measures really to prevent that. What do individuals need to do to protect themselves? I mean, you've mentioned, obviously, um, you know, um, social distancing, but just on a day-to-day -day basis, what can people do to protect themselves? So certainly the advice around hand washing remains, uh, remains paramount. Um, staying home for those who are sick in any way, shape, or form, and of course calling 111. All that general advice that we've been hearing um, every day from Public Health England is really important. Beyond that, what I would say is that some voluntary social distancing is in order. So those who are in a position to be able to work from home um, should start to do that. Um, Personally, I would advise against um, large gatherings of people, and particularly for those who are either elderly or have underlying medical conditions who we know are the most vulnerable, um, uh, would be, I think, wise to take more measures to reduce their potential exposures. Uh, of course, um, you know, because, uh, there are these concerns. Having said that, I mean, it is also true that the majority of people um, may get symptoms, and some may not show any symptoms, uh, but it will pass. That's right. So the, so the majority of people get a mild to moderate illness. That could be a, a sort of a bad cold or, or a pneumonia, but not necessarily require medical care. But about 20% or so will. And in some settings like Italy, um, there's actually been a, a, a concerningly high percentage of patients who needed intensive care, about 10% of those infected. Um, so, so we really need to bear those, um, those potential risks in mind as we think about how the health system is going to cope as the number of cases arise. But it's true that for the vast majority of, of people, they will recover without uh, requiring any care. Um, and 
What's quite interesting, actually, is that uh, we aren't hearing about too many cases of children uh, falling extremely ill. That's right, and, uh, and we don't have an explanation for that. Certainly with influenza, um, children are both affected uh, and, and certainly significantly involved in the spread. Uh, with coronavirus, that appears to be less the case. We don't see as high numbers of children being infected in very few cases where there seems to be severe disease or, or, or death. We don't exactly know why that is, and we don't know what it means. Um, uh, and in particular, we don't know necessarily how likely or unlikely infected children are to transmit the virus relative to adults. And that's really important when we think about things like, uh, like school closures. As we wait and think about uh, how some kind of vaccine can be developed for this, do you think, Professor, that this is a, a disease that we will have to live with in the future? We don't know for sure, um, but I think it's a very uh, likely possibility, certainly over the course of the next months. And if we're successful in, uh, in social distancing and other delaying tactics, that's not going to, um, to eliminate spread entirely. It will sort of spread things out um, and lengthen the time um, uh, at which we're seeing this, which helps the health system to cope. That may well carry us into the summer. There is a possibility that this virus becomes endemic, which is the term that really means it becomes sort of part of the circulation of viruses in a way that we may see it on a seasonal basis. Now, over time, we will see more people who have some immunity from having been um, previously infected, uh, and that's very important. And we will see treatments um, and eventually vaccines. Those are not on the immediate horizon, but over the course of months to a year or two, we do expect those to be available. You just mentioned the, the summer. I mean, is there any evidence that uh, the, the disease sort of spreads less in, in hotter climates or, or more humid climates? Yeah, to be clear, there's no evidence for this novel coronavirus that warmer temperatures will affect the spread or not. We can only infer based on other um, coronaviruses and respiratory viruses, uh, but to say that's the case is pure conjecture. However, there's another factor that's really important um, if we think about moving out towards the summer. Right now, in the height of flu season, our hospitals are already at, acting at near capacity because we have so many, um, uh, so many patients in the hospital with other respiratory viruses. In general, the health system is less congested during during the summer months. So even if it doesn't necessarily affect the transmission of the virus, if we're able to buy ourselves some time and get to the summer, our system will be much better prepared to cope with a surge in